Hello and welcome to the Yarnings Podcast. I'm Christine and I'll be your host. This is episode 55. I may be titling it the episode of many names because as the week has gone on, I have thought of more and more titles that I could call this one. <laughs> it is Monday, May the 4th. Silly geeky reference. Um, and it is a partially cloudy 61 degree day here in Vancouver, Washington. And I would like to welcome new and returning viewers to the podcast. Thank you for coming and checking me out and for hanging around if you've been watching for a while. I'm glad you're here. So let's move into some life stories. This last week, I was very sick. Um, I'm going to try and cut out if I have any big coughing attacks. But I um, I have my voice again. I lost my voice for a record five days, I think. So that tells you how crazy of a cold bug this was. Um, it definitely hit me in my throat. <laughs> so I didn't get to record last week, and I really missed that. And before, before I got sick, I was caretaking for my poor husband, who was also very sick. So that, that was... Um, a hard a hard week plus that we that we were out um so we kind of had to postpone my birthday my birthday was in the middle of it all um, and I had no voice and um, my niece's birthday party her birthday is the day after mine that got rescheduled to my birthday and so I wasn't even well enough to go and see the cute see her their reaction to the cute playful stripes cardi that I knit but Eric took pictures and I'm sorry I missed it um so um birthday wise um I'm still celebrating I am catching up on some of the things that I was excited about doing that didn't work out during my birthday week and that's been fun um, I normally go on a birthday extravaganza, that's what I call it, and <laughs> we drive down to my favorite mall um, that's further south than we normally go, and that hasn't happened yet, but we will do that at some point. I had a migraine this weekend, so that kind of slowed things down a little bit, too, so I'm just trying to regain my strength, <laughs> but... Besides that, before we got before we both got sick, I did a day where I went into Portland and met up with Eric at his work. Um, we did a day where we went to Ikea and wandered around and dreamed about what we're going to do to our house next. That's always a fun activity. And then this last weekend, we, we did a few more fun things. We saw a movie <laughs> and... Um, went went and did some more more shopping and that kind of stuff so yeah we are are getting getting our our health back on <laughs> so let's move into some yarnings i'm not quite as organized today as normal but we will do our best <laughs> all right so yarnings adventures in knitting i am wearing one of my finished objects I'm going to step back. This is the Drifting Cardi. And I made a few modifications. Um, I did a bunch of extra increases on the back. And I kind of thought it would come down in folds because of the way I did the increases. And I really didn't. Um, it just made it more full all the way around once I blocked it. And so when I wore it on Thursday, I actually pinned it up like this, and that looked really cool. Um, there's a couple other sweaters. The Shift of Focus is one that, that it reminds me of. It's It it clasps similarly. I think it's a Vera Valamaki one. I remember Mel from Single Handed Knits doing that one. Um, but it still looks it still looks nice when I wear it hanging down. Um, this is out of my Three Fates yarn. This is her Terra Sock. 
three fates. There we go. Her Terra Sock in the Merlin colorway. And I was calling it my Escarina because she's the girl wizard in Terry Pratchett's Equal Rights book. And yeah, um, I had originally wanted to knit it after I saw um, Mel Cloverbirds at ZK last year. And so it had been in my queue ever since. Um, I, I'm not sure that it is quite the best style for my body shape, if it just accentuates what's below, but I am going to keep wearing it. I think I'll wear it with dresses and stuff, and it will be nice. It's a nice, a nice fabric. I really like how it came out. The alternating skeins worked really well to get a good consistent color, and I did just a little bit of increasing on the sleeves to give that a little more shape and yeah so that is finished object number one and i'm going to take it off so i can show you finished object number two. Oh, and this was a pattern by cecily glock mcdonald so finished object number two this is my new one this is the conversation Cal knit along that I started when we started that knit along and I finally finished it and even with my arms outstretched it is a little longer than that because that's one of the spines it goes a little bit further this way <laughs> um, there are many ways that it can be worn. It kind of has a nice, cozy, but still light feel when I wear it single layered. Um, let me show you. I used Knit Mix Shadow in the Basalt and the Blue, lav blue Lavender and geranium and wine colorways and then I finished it with a whole bunch of buttons so there are buttons every two stitches on that top row and then one button in each of the picots on the bottom and I thought with the colors that I chose that the picots really kind of went well with it that it wasn't too fussy but because they are um rich romantic -y colors i thought that made a nice trim took a very very long time it's the picos are um three oh and i did a little feather and fan in there too so the row above the first the first um beads, if I can talk. Um, it just wavers up and down a little and you can see it better on these long sections because I was able to block it a little better. It's too big for my blocking board. <laughs> um, I could see wearing it wrapped like this on a colder day and it's still very fabulous um of course the folded in half gives it a little more um weight to it but it can be a little more scarf like although there's way more fabric than it would be a scarf but still you can see all the colors that way i think i'm gonna like it a little more little less fabric around my neck and a little more onto the shoulders. I could wear it with a shawl pin. I really, really like it. Um, I did more yardage than they called for and then obviously the beads being different. Um, this is five, almost five skeins of yarn at 440 yards each. I'm not positive if one of the skeins was less because I had ripped some out from another project. 
So I don't, I don't, I don't know if I weighed it or not. When I went to go enter it, I realized it said that I had less than I should have. So um, I only had this much left <laughs> when I was done, but I do have another skein. So I wasn't worried that I was going to completely run out, but it did take a bit, a fair bit of yarn to do the last few rows. <laughs> um, and this is a pattern by Martina Bain for the Bain Along. <laughs> And our conversation knits because this was excellent conversation knitting. I was able to do this without looking. The stitch markers, I used my. Um, I thought I brought them back in here. I used my um, Creations by Uli stitch markers all the, t the whole project, and those were nice. I was just able to. to um, Every other row you increase, so it was easy schmeasy. I would I would knit another one of these if I had another set of colors because it made such good conversation knitting. Ooh, I like it like that too. <laughs> so that was finished object number two. Let's go into some works in progress. This is my spirited Cardi, and this morning I bound off the bottom of it. This was another really good conversation knit because once I finished up a few little darts in the back, then it was just straight, straight knitting down the back, um, 14 inches until I got to a design feature, which you can only see on these front edges. Obviously once this is blocked it'll be a little better, but there's some decreasing little triangle out of it there on both sides. And now I just need to do the sleeves. And I am really pleased with this. I might make these sleeves not much longer than what is here. Um, it kind of looks like a nice best length uh, because it's gonna have the nice long body I think I can wear it with things even if I don't add sleeves and I think this will go really nice over dresses so you can see it comes comes down quite far and the nice open fronts this is the drifting pattern by Elena Nodal and it is in my Bumble Birch Cocoon Lace Weight, the colorway Atlantic that I fell in love with. So I'm really excited to have the bottom bound off and doing the sleeves shouldn't take too much time. So I should have another finished object for you guys quite quickly. And I still have, I still have 30 grams between the two skeins left. Um, one of them is a little lighter than the other, so I will do the sleeves um, with this skein probably. I probably won't use it, cut into the other one. So I've got plenty for whatever I want to do, if I want it a little longer. All right, my stripey socks. So after I bound off my last socks, my Hermione is in the 716. I cast on pretty quickly after that. I think it was the day after I record, recorded last for my Thoroughly Thwacked. Um, I don't remember what base this is, but it's an MCN. I don't see it in my pile of tags up there. I need to organize that pile. There it is. A little better because some of those are things that are finished. This is her Superwash Cashmerino Nylon in the colorway 2D Free. To me it kind of looks like some regal colorway. It really has a royal feel to it and it's very lush because the cashmere it makes it they're super soft. These are softer than any of the bases I've used so I'm really pleased. Um, I'm getting close to a heel. I think I have another inch or so, but I measured, I measured after, bef 
I measured at some point over the weekend and then I made a bit more on them so and I was at five so these have been going along with me and they will continue to go along with me I plan to knit them as long as I can um, even though I've been doing a lot of short socks lately these ones are gonna be nice long ones so that'll be good they are living in my cupcake bag and it's just a vanilla sock I'll use the fish lips kiss heel and the yarn I got on the yarn crawl this year they will be good for the stripey sock knit along the stocking and zombies do all right I am since I bound off one Martina Bain pattern I am going to start another one this is the sleeves pattern and I've had it on my mind for a while. Um, I'm going to do it with two skeins of a knitted wet. Where are those tags? I don't see them. They are somewhere. This is a knitted wit yarn. That's that one. And I have had this yarn for a while. I was going to use it for a project for my mother-in-law and it wasn't quite the right colors. And then I've had this one even longer than that. Um, this one is French Kiss and this one is Moody Blues, I believe. You'll have to find those tags. I swear they were right here. <laughs> um, and it is a Reno silk. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna look because I want to remember. Here we go. Oh, okay. It's cash. It's her cashy base. It's 70 merino, 20 cashmere, 10 nylon. Um, so I only have 800 yards and sleeves calls for 250 grams, so a little more than that. So I think I'm going to make it three quarter sleeves. Um, I'm starting with the dark for the triangles and I'll probably add a stripe of the light into the arms. I'm doing it two at a time. I'll do it with a top needle and a bottom needle like I do my socks once I get there. So then my sleeves will be exactly the same. And then I will move in to the French Kiss, the Lavender Moody Blues and French Kiss. Yes, I have the names right <laughs> for that. So I guess I'm knitting with more cashmere than I thought I was. I think this will be a nice combo and um, it's a pattern that I've been wanting to do and it's going to be a very nice conversation knit once I get the triangles done, well, even the triangles have been easy, um, but once I get them in the round, then I think I'll just build a zoom and I won't have to think about anything until I have to start measuring to be done with, with wherever I'd like them to be. Probably, I'll probably be able to make them there. Um, I'm going to try and make them a little closer fitting instead of, some of, some people made them where the arms were we're a lot looser than that. So I think I should be able to make it just a little more snug and still have plenty of room for my upper arms. And yeah. So that is the sleeves pattern by Martina Bem in my knitted wit. And the center of the <laughs> fridge kiss was not wanted to come out. I also Oh, well, let's finish the knitting first. I dropped this on the floor. All right, so this is Donut Squared. This is, I'm making a 2B cowl. So in the round, I cast on provisionally. I'm going to make a cowl and attach it at, with the provisional cast on at the end. Um, this is Nitpicks Felici. This is the jelly bean colorway. I have two skeins of jelly bean and two skeins of sorbet. So if it's not as long as I'd like it to be, I might add some sorbet in. Um, I did, 
I cast this on with a pair of Chowgu 9 inch circulars, size 4, to see how I liked using the 9 inch circulars. And I'm, I'm not convinced because there's not as much room for my hands. I have to be pretty careful not to scrunch up my hands for too long. I can do it, but it definitely takes effort for me to relax my hands enough to make it work, especially my right hand. Um, there's just not enough room for as much of my hand in it as I'd like there to be. But what it's really good for is movie knitting. I knit a full color repeat from this pink to the bottom of this pink during Avengers. And obviously, I wasn't knitting my normal full speed. I was just kind of knitting as my hands felt like it in the movie. It wasn't it wasn't as nonstop. It was just kind of to have something in my hands. Um, so this will probably also be a really good podcasting project. I just have to be really careful to not hurt my wrists doing it because it uses a little different muscles. I purchased a couple pairs of size ones thinking I'll try it on some socks, but I'm glad that I'm trying it with the size fours first because it is a different feel. And I wanted to make sure before I actually got the ones out and used them that it would work for me. And I'm, I'm not 100% convinced yet. I think it will work for this, but I'm not sure that it is consistent enough gauge for my socks. If that makes sense? Like, I feel like my tension is a little different. And I'm not sure how that would impact socks. But I won't know until I try. So I probably will try once I finish with this project. There won't be socks that I instantly pick up to do, but this will be good, good conversation knitting for sure. All right, and then the sweet Annetta, who's Annetta T on Ravelry, sent me some birthday yarn. This is a beautiful, um, the ball band is in the other room that I almost never sit in, but I sat in while I was sick. I hand balled this when I got it so that I could play with it. And what I did was I grabbed a six millimeter J crochet, crochet hook and just started, started with a little circle worked my way out. I don't crochet very often, but it works really nice with the big yarn. A super antidote to all the lace weight I've been doing. <laughs> that was what she said in her note, and I thought that was very cool. So I made one that was smaller, and then this one will be a little bit bigger, and they'll be great yarn bowls for projects or to sit on my shelf with whatever is coming next, and I'll have that awesome memory of Annetta sending me cool birthday yarn. So that seemed like something fun to work on in between my other projects while all the sickness stuff was going on. It was just a really nice antidote to the lace weight. Thank you, Annetta. And then I do have one stash enhancement. This is from Rachel of On The Round, and I have had my eye on her yarn for a long time. Even some time ago, she used to post pictures of yarn and ask for colorway names. And I remember naming a few of them, like in my early days of knitting. And um, this one is her spontaneous sock yarn in Corydale Nylon the colorway SSY113. <laughs> um, she had named, she had looked for some inspiration at one point of colorways and I had suggested one that was brown and pink and purple and silver like my hair. And I don't know if this is the one, but it's certainly got those elements to it. 
And so I had tried, she'd had an auction for some of the yarn that, that she was trying to de-stash of her own personal hand dyed. Um, and I didn't make it, I didn't get any of those. So then when I saw that she had this up in her shop, I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. And I have not knit with Corey Dale. I think it's going to make some great socks. So this will go up here on my To Become Socks shelf. So that's exciting. I don't have any spinning to show you, but I do have a book. Ah, there's the stitch markers. My little, my ones that came out of my new them. <laughs> now they can be something else. So, before, you, before I recorded last time, I had gotten this already, but I hadn't had a chance to look through it until the last week or so. And this is Knit, Wear, Love by Amy Herzog. I bought it, pre-ordered it, and it is kind of the follow-up to her Knit to Flatter, which I also love. And I really love a lot of things about this book. I really, really appreciated her mood boards. So she goes into deciding what your style might be. Um, and what elements you might find in your styles. See this pretty romantic page. I don't think that all of my clothes needs to be romantic. But I do really like the aesthetic. Um, I definitely have some classic and some modern. Maybe a little bit of sporty, maybe a little bit of casual. And so it was quite fun to see how she defined all these things. The awesome thing is you really don't have to pick. It's just kind of a way to get inspired to find the sweaters that are going to match you, which is totally, totally what I've been trying to do. When I made the Regency dress back in December, I wanted a style that was going to suit me, and I really found it because I kind of pieced it together from other stuff. She still has a lot of stuff about fit and a lot of stuff about how to make your measurement grid. So the things that you would change on like your length right here <laughs> or where you think your neckline suits you best, how you would change it to go up and down. Um, she does have an awful lot of different styles and techniques there are six different, six chapters, eight chapters. She's got pullovers, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't say back there. She's got pullovers and cardigans. She's got, um, what's the pullovers? That's the cardigans. She's got some with some really nice detailing. She's got vests and tanks, which I love that those were included. Those are things that I really enjoy. There's cowls, which is kind of a version of a pullover, I would say. Because um, a lot of pullovers you could add a cowl to. There are tunics, which I am pleased to see to see that idea, she's got a couple different that are really fun. I like the longer length, whether it suits me or not. I think it helps that I like it. She's got wraps, which are kind of another extension of the cardigans. And then that's the tank. I think that's, oh, and the bolero. She did boleros, which has some neat things. So each of these pages have really great um, definitions of things that you could do to suit your style. 
and then it goes through and actually lets helps you see how you would make it in different weights of yarn. So the bolero can be made at fingering, horse, or bulky weight. So pretty much you could do any of these in any weight, roughly. Some of them have different different um, gauges offered. That was just the bolero list. Um, the tunic is fingering DK and Aaron weight. So there's a lot of different options and it's really mix and match. I love the idea of it. It's going to take a little more homework to actually put these sweaters into plan. Because you, have, because you want to make your sweater to fit you the best, it takes a little more work. And I'm okay with that. I think this is an awesome starting place and I'm really going to be able to use this a lot. I am hoping that some of these um, styles make their way into custom fit online because that is a very helpful helpful tool as well and it has all my measurements in it already but yeah I'm really I'm really pleased with this book and I'm glad that I chose to add it to my collection so if you get a chance pick it up look through it order it from your library a lot of libraries you can request something and they will buy it to add to the collection or go buy it on Amazon. I will have a link to it in the show notes and I am an Amazon affiliate so I get a little teeny tiny bit if you click through those links. So that is Knitwear Love. All right, knitting community. We have a winner. This beautiful Three Fates yarn, which sparkles, was given for a giveaway from Stefania the dyer and I drew random number for the thread I closed the thread um, a few days after <laughs> a few days after we did it and I drew number 26 and number 26 was Tracy GH and Tracy said if she were a color she would be purple and purple could be any range of the purple spectrum so you are the winner, Tracy. Congratulations. I think I'm going to go ahead and message you today instead of waiting for you to see this so that I can get it out because you are an international person. So hoping to go to the post office this week because I have all of the winners have contacted me now from our last prize draw and I'm going to get all those out. When I was sick, I just didn't have the extra energy to do the four blocks and the four blocks, four blocks there, four blocks from the bus stop <laughs> to get to the downtown post office. So this week I will make that energy happen and get all of those prizes out and hopefully Tracy's as well. We do also have the conversation it's cow going on right now and there is a prize in the in the mix and we'll probably add some other small things. Um, Annetta donated a pattern and I am, several of my projects have been fabulous. I think almost everything that I'm knitting right now are good conversation knits because that's what I've had the capacity for with being sick. I've got a lot of things going on this month so I need to do things that don't take a lot of extra complexity. Although I do have a couple of lace shawls that I really want to cast on. And one of them was a gift, gift from Amy, uh, the damask shawl for my birthday. So I'm looking forward to picking some yarn to do that in. And I've also got yarn set aside for the Stella Luna shawl. Um, and yeah, be great to get those on the needles, but that might not happen until a little bit later in the year. <laughs> All right, so let's move into Sagas of Geekery. Um, now playing, we had a lot of days that we didn't play games because we were sick. 
when I'm sick and I want cough medicine. <laughs> I just don't have that same brain power to play the strategy games. But we did get to play Roll for the Galaxy a couple times. We played Legendary and we played Pillars of the Earth. And those are all, all good games. Now, oh, yeah, and we played Legendary. And then for now watching, my shirt is um, showing my my favorite geekdom, which is just Whedon's geekdom. <laughs> and because he is so integ integral to the Marvel Universe at the moment, and I got to see Avengers, no spoilers, but I really enjoyed it, and I want to go see it again. <laughs> it's really good. Um, so leading up to that, we finished S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. I have to always own the Whedon shows for my shelf. So we rewatched S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, and then we've been keeping current on S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, which is ongoing. There's still three hours, I think it's an episode, and then a two-hour finale left, um before the end. So then I'll add season two to my collection. Um, and then when it was the right spot, um, the episode after, the episode where we lead into Captain America, we watched Captain America and then finished S.H.I.E.L.D. season one. And that was great to get to do that in the correct order. And that kind of got us up to speed for Avengers, just to remind us of the happenings of Captain America uh, 2, the Winter Soldier, and then having just caught up on S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2. It was all good. Um, I'm also watching Stargate. I am on Season 5 right now. I got a lot of that watching done while I was sick. <laughs> so, my shirt, Joss Whedon, he directed Avengers. He's been my master for much longer than that. <laughs> it was a play on Star Wars shirts back in the day. But yes, I've had this for some time. <laughs> so, all right. Book of Cooking. Nothing substantial to report. We had a lot of leftovers. We did some takeout on my actual birthday when I was too sick to go to the party, Eric brought Chinese food from one of our favorite restaurants that's way out near where my sister Lisa's house is. Um, and it wasn't what I was planning on for my birthday, but it worked out and it was nice to not have to cook anything when I was that sick. Um, so besides that, we've just been doing a lot of small stuff. This week will be better for that. And then Fancel Chatterer, I didn't write anything down. The happiness continues. I got an awesome book in the mail. And I think you guys have heard me talk about Wickwick. Wickwick is what you can when you can. The book is Healthy Living on Your Terms by Carla Bernberg and Ronnie Noon. And I was lucky enough to go to Fitblogin back in 2013, and it's a conference that Ronnie puts on, and I met a lot of awesome people there. And I have followed along with these ladies' lives ever since, and I have totally embraced the Wickwick lifestyle. <laughs> um, it kind of fit in with how I have to manage my fibromyalgia um, that I really only can do what I can. <laughs> I can't push myself too much harder. And so this whole movement is really awesome. And the book is fabulous. It's got a lot of wonderful things. So like, they're just short. This is maximize your effort. Um, multitask. It has little prompts for things that you can put on the internet. Pencil it in. Um, go with the flow. Be prepared. They're wonderful, positive 
things. So often people equate exercise with a preset, pre-planned time to work out. Now we're guessing that you've already gleaned that every single move we make counts. Just move throughout your day. You're not, you're still doing things even if it's not a 30 minute workout. It's just really brilliant. It's, it's a smart way to go about being healthy in small bites, in small ways, and just giving it what you can and knowing that counts. It really just gives you more freedom. And I would recommend this book a lot. Just getting the, getting the chance to do things, see these positive ideas, and do things the wick wick way. Um, this is another one I will link to in the show notes. It, I have not read all of it yet. I've just been kind of flipping and it's still been really meaningful and helpful. So this is my happy place today. Um, just knowing that every little thing that I do, I'll add up to my life. It's awesome. So, two book reviews <laughs> of sorts. Um, to finish up The Happiness Continues, I am starting, I've started physical therapy for my back. See, we're still doing the standing desk for the recording. That's kind of wick wicking. <laughs> um, so I start that two times a week. So my month for May is going to be very busy. So I'm going to try and podcast still weekly, but I may have a little shifting of which days work for me because of that new schedule thing. I'm not usually out of the house that many days a week for that many extra things on top of the stuff I'm already doing. So it will be a fun challenge. And you'll probably, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably see a lot more bus knitting than normal. I do have a bus pass for the month. And I can feel that tickle coming back into my throat. So that's probably a good sign that we should finish things up. So thank you for joining me today. I know it's a little bit longer, but it was two weeks. And I had lots of things to tell you about. So you can follow me around on the internet. I am Christine with a K on Ravelry. I am KDLB, just the letters on Instagram. Um, you can join the Ravelry group. That's where we do contests and knit alongs. Um, it's the Yarnings Podcast Ravelry group. And you can find links to, to everything that I talked about today in the show notes on yarningspodcast.com. So until next time, that's the story. Bye. <laughs>